Hey y'all, what's up? I'm Amy, aka the Piscean Seer, and this is one of your daily collective messages. Like, 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 and subscribe if you get anything out of this. Thank you so, so very much to those of you who do like, subscribe, and comment, okay? It is always and forever going to be loved and appreciated. God, Archangels, Ancestors, Ascendant Masters, Cosmic Guides, all beings of the highest and purest white light with the best interest of me and the collective at heart. You are always and forever welcome into my readings, okay? Please give my wonderful, fabulous, and amazing Pisces and Seer family the best and most accurate information for them at this time, okay? Hello, my beautiful lovers. Hello to any new subscribers, okay? Welcome to the fam. I'm so very happy to have you. Um, welcome to my family who is already here. Thank you for coming back. Okay. I appreciate you each and every single one of you. <laughs> so, um, I hope you're having a good day. My day is all right. Uh, so this is an Ascendant Master Melchizedek reading. Okay. I have just three notes. Okay. So I got the number 322. I got Eucalyptus and I got 3388. Okay. So you could be a life path number three or two or five, or you could be a life path number six or eight, okay? Or 22 is what I'm hearing. So 322, it says, so it says with angel number 322, your guides are encouraging you to use that positivity and mindset to live a life of purpose, okay? So try to maintain your positivity for as long as possible. You know, we got at the bottom of this deck over here, she who laughs. So... Keeping this beautiful, humorous perspective on life, okay? Keeping your energy as upbeat as you possibly can, as much as you possibly can. It doesn't mean you're not going to have bad days or whatever, but at the end of the day, you are the star and everything that you want and need is on its way into you, you know? Spirit pours into you the way that this star is pouring onto her divine counterpart. Also, you could be attracting your divine counterpart at this time, okay? Um, also, there's the Nine of Pentacles right here. So your worth, your value is, is at an all-time high. And you just need to remain patient with your guides and allow them to work on bringing these things into you, okay? Look, we got unexpected income and we got expectation under that, okay? So expect these beautiful, unexpected blessings to come in. Expect, you know, unexpected, <laughs> like everything, everything. Expect everything you think you can't get or you think that is you're not, like, I don't know. I don't know how, to, how for you to expect the unexpected, but that's pretty much <laughs> what he's saying, okay? Expect the unexpected. Expect, it's like maybe the best things in life are unexpected for you maybe like real genuine love is is something that you don't you don't expect you know what i mean like maybe you all are always expecting something negative to come in or you're always expecting things to go wrong but um Melchizedek is saying you need to use your third eye to create these very positive situations that you want to see come true in your life you know I think for a long time, maybe your third eye was blocked or maybe somebody had some sort of control over the way that you see things in some sort of way, you know, or maybe in some way you were fooling yourself and imagining things out into your life that you really didn't want. And now you're in a place where you're seeing clearly what it is that you want and really using your free will properly. So focus on manifesting and meditating whenever you can, especially when things feel unclear or you get a little bit emotional. Okay. It says finding the right balance means you are helping to manifest your deepest desires. Be sure to prioritize what you want most and the important people in your life, allocating time to both, you know, so find a, a good balance between your home and your work life. Okay. Um, I think that's it for 322. So eucalyptus is a great plant, okay? If you get the chance to do some aerobotherapy with it, I would suggest working with it, okay? Um, eucalyptus is used to bring fresh energy to a situation, to heal regrets and worries, and to relieve mental exhaustion, okay? So if you find yourself overthinking or getting lost in your regrets or in your worries or anything that you may be going through, Spirit saying using eucalyptus oil will bring lots of fresh energy to the space and also give you a little bit of clarity of mind, okay? Maybe meditating with that scent in the air, you know? I think they have eucalyptus incense and all kinds of things that are eucalyptus scented um i'm hearing eucalyptus tea i don't really know if that's a thing okay i thought eucalyptus 
the, the leaf was not the best for you, but I'm going to look at it. Okay, it says eucalyptus leaves are commonly used in purification magic. They can be burned to represent air and cleanse a person, place, or space. Okay, so maybe just not necessarily you using it, eucalyptus, although it will be very powerful for you. I think this is just an overall call to cleanse your space, cleanse your person. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you, I mean, like your body, you know how they say you have something on your person. I think you could be having things going on with your mental body and you could not be it's like you have the clarity, but you have moments where things aren't so clear and you don't really believe you're able to accomplish these visions and things like that, okay? We got corrupt, unethical cults when I part the deck. Maybe people could be sending you certain energies or whatever, trying to cause conflict, okay? This conflict magic energy. People could be sending you conflict magic, trying to control you in some sort of way, trying to stir up some drama in your life. But I think as long as you just stay calm, you know, Keep that patience about you and try to clearly communicate whatever it is that's going on with you and that other person. Those things are not able to affect you in the way that it would if you just like lost your shit and really got caught up in the drama, you know. All right. So now 3388. It says 3388 meaning lets you know that it's time to arrive at your divine light. Now is the time to become your best self. So that's what, you know, Malchizedek is really asking you to focus on. Just continuing to be your, be your best self. Communicate as best as you can. And really try not to let people get under your skin or bother you in any type of way. Because I think that's really a thing for you at this time. But of course it is because you're the star, okay? It says it brings a message for you to keep listening to your own inner wisdom and angelic guidance. And to take positive action as directed okay uh let me see what else it says it carries a potent message of abundance balance and aligning with the flow of prosperity in your life okay so that's what it really is it's like he's asking you to clear out certain ways of thinking um to really get grounded and focus on the positive things okay so that you can remain aligned with the flow of prosperity like, don't, don't imagine yourself not getting what you want or whatever, you know, even if you think, you know, you're just sitting there and you're just like being sarcastic, like, oh, like what I want probably ain't even going to come in, you know, just, you know, with the attitude or whatever he's saying, like, that's really not a good way of looking at it. Like, really look at this world as this beautiful, artistic you know, amazing place where anything is able to happen and look at yourself as infinite and eternal. Look at yourself as someone who's pulled so much power from your past lives and who is really tapped into this Kabbalah tree of life type of energy. Someone who's constantly integrating these life lessons like a boss, okay? <laughs> and who is a true like emanation, okay? A true reflection of the divine and the way that the divine works here in this realm, okay? So what's going on with them that you want to talk about? We got the Merkaba, okay? It says movement, long distance travel and excitement, okay? You could be moving. <laughs> you could be getting ready to move, okay? But also I think you're just experiencing forward movement, you know? When it comes to your spirituality, when it comes to your connection, like I said, to the divine, you are a true expression of what they really truly do have to offer. You really are this beautiful master in everything that you do. And then we got the events at the bottom of the deck, you know, his big head giving me like big brain energy, baby. You're out of this world. And when it comes to mysteries, you read between the lines like it's nothing. Your intuition is extremely powerful and amazing. And I heard trust it, okay? Make sure that you're trusting it and that you're believing the divine when they're telling you all of these different things. I heard like what you think you're supposed to do all of this toil and labor forever. No, you're meant to have this beautiful life where these amazing things come in out of nowhere and things loosen up because you've been working so hard and following your guidance and accomplishing the things that you were meant to accomplish on this journey. So just keep it up and keep it going. What's coming toward them? Okay, look. 
great fortune is coming toward you, baby. <laughs> so just stay. But it's like you're all in your head, you know, all in your thoughts about something, okay? We got mature man and we got the lovers, okay? <laughs> so you could have love on the brain, okay? Or some mature man could have you in their thoughts, wanting to make you their lover, wanting to make you some sort of like privileged lady, okay? We got a gift and we got a journey. And we got sudden wealth under that, okay? And we got a house under that. <laughs> Okay, and we got courtship under that. It's crazy. You finna get whatever it is that you want. You're making forward movement on this journey. But you're gonna have these days where things are a little bit hard and sometimes you're overthinking. And as long as you can find that humor, find that joy, find that lighter energy, that higher vibration in your day, at some point you're going to continue to make this forward movement. So just keep focusing on what's important. Even if you do have someone interested in you, he's saying like try to make sure that you maintain that beautiful personal relationship that you have built up with yourself you know and don't feel like anyone else has the power to like take away your energy or to disrupt your life in any way i know like sometimes it can seem like a disruption because things can be emotionally you know, hectic and sometimes people come into your life and they cause you to release certain energies or to change the way that you're acting or thinking. But these shakeups don't happen for no reason. So try to be as open to it as possible because the journey that you're walking, the path you're headed down, it's a beautiful one and it's leading you into more of this great fortune type of energy. And the life path, oh, I already said eight, okay, so... All the numbers I said already in life path numbers are already here. <laughs> you could be 26 or 33 though, okay? You can have your birthday um, on the 3rd of March or just in the month of March or February, okay, or June. We got believe, okay? So the outcome, okay, um, I'm hearing like, uh, now I'm a believer from um, Shrek, okay? Ooh, I, I'm a believer, believer. Okay, I don't know the words. Uh, then I saw her face. Ooh, ah. Now, what do you say? No doubt in my mind. Okay, so more, it's kind of more of that love energy, okay? But also, I think spirit's doing a lot of things. Like, you think things are just getting torn down or being removed or like all of this has been for nothing. But really, your kundalini has been rising this entire time. You've been going through this very powerful rebirth. It's very important that you believe in the intentions that you have set for yourself because they're coming true. And that's how spirit's going to make you a believer. You know, you're in a beautiful, sacred energy. And yeah, they might keep a lot of things secret from you, but that's because they want to build trust with you. They want you to be able to trust that they're going to carry you forward with this horse energy. And they want you to be very confident knowing you're covered and you're beautiful inside and out. Yeah, so this energy of you being more embracing of this death energy and not being so easily like caught off guard or sidetracked or pushed into a negative energy where you're worried that things aren't going to work, you know, like spiraling, okay? Trying not to spiral and, and hold that belief that you have in the beautiful and amazing things that are able to happen in your future. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see why. Hold on. Let me find it. I forgot what it's called in here. It's not called a rabbit. <laughs> this animal, okay. I don't know why they didn't put the animals on here. They just gonna label them like this. <laughs> uh, there it is. It's called a jackalope, okay? Because it has the antlers. <laughs> so it says this card represents belief and appreciation of the unknown, okay? The mythical jackalope, a rabbit or, or a hare with the horns of a deer or an antelope. 
is found in folklore all over the world, as well as being a popular cryptid in North American folklore. Tales of Tales and depictions of horned rabbits can be found across continents from the oral legends of Wixacria people in Mexico to the single horns Al Mirage of Iranian myth. This creature has existed through hybrid taxidermy art and stories of centuries and consistently ignites the imagination of storytellers through the present day. So this gives me a couple of things, more of that unknown energy, of course, but it's like you being a mixture, okay? You're a mixture of a lot of different things. You are like this, this very mythical creature that they're showing us, you know? And I feel like you're just stepping more and more into that mystical type of energy. So it's very important that you, like they said, hold that patience and continue to stay consistent and continue to ignite your imagination and to tell yourself the best story about yourself and about where your life is going right now. You know, it says, despite being a mythological cryptid, the jackalope's origin is commonly attributed to actual sightings of rabbits and hares suffering from a condition known as Shope papillomavirus, which causes them to develop horn-like growths on their body. The jackalope reminds us that many unbelievable stories begin with fact and to appreciate magic in our everyday. This card encourages unique perspective and eccentricity and is a symbol of powerful creativity. It carries the message to believe in yourself and to know there are forces within you that have yet to be seen or believed by others, okay? It says the shadow of the jackalope card is belief and imagination taking to excess. You may become lost in your own dream world and forget to come back down to earth, which is what I was saying earlier about you staying grounded. It says often that world may seem safer or more accepting while the real world is harsh and difficult. But with your creativity, you can find balance between both worlds, you know. And he's saying like love is the perfect example of that, you know, because I said something about a divine character counterpart but it's like at the end of the day you know you are a divine counterpart to yourself and it's very important that you always look at yourself like that you know like yesterday I don't remember who was saying it I think maybe it was the ascendant masters but anyway they were saying or maybe it was the day before yesterday anyway they were saying that you you and spirit have a thing going on and everything outside of that is like a third party or something else that's being offered to this beautiful connection that you already have going on between yourself and the divine, you know, because to know the divine is to truly know the self. I'm hearing to know, no, no, me is to love, love, love me. Or I think she says him, but this is what I'm hearing. <laughs> That's what I was hearing. To know me is to love me. You know what I mean? So to know the self is to truly know God or to truly know the divine or to truly know the element of this animal is spirit. Okay. So really upholding this relationship that, that you have with yourself. You're able to see the unseen. You're also able to tap into fairy magic. You're also, um, it says, encouraging imagination and inspiration. You're an encouragement to other people's imagination and inspiration. But if you get too caught up in your imagination and in your inspirations, then you're able to like fool yourself. You know what I mean? And not see things in this real world as clear as you possibly can. You connect with other worlds and you even receive visions. But it's very important that you stay grounded at this time so spirit can take you to where they're trying to take you. It's like really... I think you have a strong sense of belief, but you haven't really seen things go in the best way for you. So there's just a little bit of doubt there. You know, I heard a sliver of doubt that spirit's still working on you with. And that's why they said they're going to make you a believer. OK. OK, so what's this uh, Merkaba energy? We got healer, nourishment and nurture. And we got Frigga with readiness, bounty and plenty. OK, so I feel like, you know you're really much more ready than you think you are for the things that are going to come up for you in the future. Like you've done so much healing and nourishment to the self. You just got to keep it up and remain patient. 
like you might have this very strong doubt like that's just what i'm picking up this strong doubt that whatever you want or you need oh that never comes in so why should i get myself excited on the back of this card you know when there's always some witch or some little some little elf or some little gremlin waiting in the shadows to attack me why should i even waste my time continuing this journey but you are gifted and you're a divine inspiration and you didn't go through this awakening for no reason so it's very important that you trust and have that faith that your abundance and peace and and um you know contentment is going to come in for you and then we got the soul king because your ancestors are always going to ensure that you're covered and that you're straight you have so many different connections to the divine realm even when you're unaware of them they still help you because they recognize you as their soul kin. They are your family and spirit. And, and they stay true to that kinship and bring you whatever it is that you need. They look upon us like little babies that they're caring for and guiding throughout this world, you know? So really have trust in that. And we got the room king with wise one and counselor, okay? They're always coming in with this counselor type of energy, always providing you with this energy of prophecy and guidance and direction. Also, you can continue to arrive at this place where you are in this energy of rebirth when you when you are feasting, when you are in a place of joy. This is what they're always guiding you to. This says celebration, it says anticipation, and it says event, but it also says before the gathering, you know, so before the gathering of all of this beautiful thing, spirit want to make sure they get you right. Make sure that you're shining. Make sure that you're hopeful for the future and that you're ready energetically and mentally for these beautiful things that are coming in. And while you prepare yourself in that way, they move all of these tricksters and all of these negative energies that wish to come up against you or affect you in any way out of the way so that you can just you know, have, just totally lose yourself in this beautiful energy of bliss and enjoy this life for what exactly it is, you know. But it's important that you find that fine line between being super spacey and being super prepared for the future and still find a little room for magic in between all of that. And it can be a bit much. So Malchie's the deck is just saying patience, okay? Because I think right now you're really feeling this full energy, okay? <laughs> right here at the bottom of this deck. You're really feeling this full energy, okay? In a major way, you might be feeling like you've done this for no reason, okay? But your justice is always going to, ri to arrive to you right in the nick of time. Right when you're ready. It's by divine time. Don't forget that. What's this healer nourishment, readiness, and bounty energy? We got the Knight of Chalices, okay? The Knight of Cups. So I was saying something about someone coming to offer you love. I can't show you that much of these cards because they, they all got like a nipple on them, okay? And we got this Three of Pentacles, okay? And then see how these two lovers are here, you know, loving each other, talking to each other or whatever, having their moment. And this person is outside observing them doing magic, okay? So I feel like there's definitely somebody in the shadows, you know, even if we were looking at these two parts, uh, these two counterparts as just you, it's like somebody has a problem with you offering yourself all of this love, okay? Every time they see you happy, every time they see you upbeat, they try to do something to ruin this beautiful energy for you all because they're heartbroken. And I've seen this as the Three of Pentacles, but it's the Three of Swords, okay? <laughs> so they're heartbroken about your happiness, about your wholeness. So you just have to ignore people at this time and continue to move forward in the best way that you know how. Yeah, we got the seven of pentacles. That's how you really truly going to harvest and really get that time where you're able to relax to yourself. We got the sun right here. And it's like, don't worry, because not only are these beautiful blessings being, you know, exposed for all to see, but other people are being exposed behind you and your bliss. Your ancestors are not playing any games when it comes to you and neither are your ascended masters. But you have to believe that that sun is coming in. OK, you have to believe you're really, truly in a brighter day, in a brighter time. 
And I love how this sun card has two adults on it because it's always a child on a horse, right? It's more of this energy of wholeness because I'm, I'm getting that divine counterpart a little bit, but I don't think that's really what's important here. He's having me look at this as the two sides of you really working together now, being in love with the journey and yourself. That's what's attracting this great fortune. So he's asking you to be in that energy as much as possible. What's the Knight of Chalices and the Three of Swords? Or you could have even been feeling heartbroken, feeling like, oh, you know, just when I think I'm ready, just when I think I'm attracting what it is that I need, you know, things are going wrong or whatever. But with the Six of Pentacles, it's like you have to believe that the divine is doing these things in your best interest and that they're always going to deliver on what they promise you. God don't make empty promises. So always remember that when you're on your journey, okay? What's the Three of Swords and the Seven of Pentacles? We got the Two of Chalices, okay? You're in this place where you really truly are having this amazing energetic exchange, not only with the two sides of you, but with the divine. That this, that you are really actively co-creating, you know? We got the seven of, pen oh, the king of pentacles, okay? And we got the world. I think this was all an attempt to boost up your masculine energies, okay? So that you could be able to be more attractive. After this time, being in this five of cups energy, your past was not the best, okay? It's like there's a person, like there's a face in this water that these two people are sitting next to, you know? And the, there's like a torch or something on it. So it's almost this energy of like you being under that water for so long and just like watching different people find their happiness or have their moments or whatever and feeling like you were going to be stuck in that sadness and despair. But I don't think that you're there anymore. And it's important that you really stay as far away from that energy as you possibly can. Yeah, with the full, trust the leap of faith that you have made, baby. Because it's beautiful and it's perfect. We got the seven of chalices. It broke you through all of these illusions and opened up nothing but options. Your options are wide open. Any door you want to go through, you can go through it. All you need is the belief and the effort that it takes to get through that door. But you've been spending this entire time unlocking all of these keys within yourself. So Mark Melchizedek wants you to continue to do that and try to keep your mind very clear, you know. It's almost this energy of you being pretty resistant to spirit at this time, you know. Yeah, there's a need for you to change your perspective just a little bit. What's the Knight of Chalices and the Three of Swords? We got mischief, okay. But I think that also some of these energies and emotions that you're feeling are coming in from these ghosts of the past, you know, like they want to come in like they're being mischievous behind the scenes. Could be three different people trying to mess with you, mess with your intuition, mess with your third eye in the way that you're seeing things. Like I said, causing conflict and you kind of reacting because you don't really realize that it's conflict that certain people are trying to cause for you, you know? And certain magic, the divine will let that come in because they want you to be able to recognize it for what it is, you know? Call the conflict magic for what it is. Say a, a prayer about it. Ask the divine to clear things up. Meditate. You know what I'm saying? Talk to the divine while you're in the water, okay? And this will make things a lot clearer for you. But make sure that you do take the time to seek that clarity is what he's saying. What's the three of swords and the seven of pentacles? We got self-interest, okay? It's like these people are messing with you because they're extremely heartbroken that you won't battle with them, okay? That you won't stoop down to their level and be on some negative shit with them. That you're maintaining this mature way of thinking and this mature way of being. And that's not your problem, okay? Continue to focus on what you're interested in. Continue to focus on the things that you love and the things that you can actually do something about. And continue to walk away from these pointless battles, you know? Because I feel like when it's true love or when it's a connection that's meant to be or when it's somebody who really has your best interest at heart, it's, ne it's not, never going to be a battle. It might be a conversation, 
or it might be something we need to discuss or we might need to find some common ground between us so that we can come to a resolution in this situation. But it should never really truly be an argument. The people that love you, they talk to you in a way that you they, that you need them to talk to you. Maybe not all the time, but they're going to be honest with you and they're going to tell you the truth, even if it's something you feel like you don't want to hear. And I think that this is not what you were dealing with in the past, okay? Or you might have people around you who really aren't interested in that kind of like rapport with you. They just want to cause mischief and cause battles in your life and make things harder for you just because things are hard for them. So pinpoint that energy and, and pray about it and get it out of your energy and ask God to remove it so that you can continue to move down your path, you know? Whenever he's saying, like, whenever you feel yourself sliding into that chaotic type of energy where you want to be confrontational or you feel like you owe someone an explanation or you feel like you have to entertain some sort of mischief in any type of way, remember who you are and then don't and expect this great fortune as a reward for you constantly turning your cheek on the bullshit, okay? What's the seven of pentacles and the lovers? We got illusion, okay? Because people are presenting an illusion. But it's also this energy of you making sure you're not creating an illusion for yourself. Like seeing the garbage for what it is and not convincing yourself that, you know, this pile of poop is really a pretty rose. This is what I'm really hearing, okay? And I feel like, you know, if you're not sure if people are putting on an illusion then still continue to live your life and let the situation play out and don't be mad when your intuition is proven right in the end, you know? Just do whatever is best for you is what I'm really getting from this. Even if you got to, you know, you might feel like it's a problem for you to make these decisions alone or whatever and it might seem like it's a little bit harder, but at the end of the day, when you get alone, you get in this, in the company of all of these beautiful energies who, like I said, have your best interest at heart and they bring you back to a lighter, happier, fun place, okay? And then you're able to get the direction that you need. When you spend that time in solitude, you're able to really observe what has gone down between you and another person or even what's going down in your brain <laughs> that you you are like readily aware of all day, you know? So just trust in yourself and trust in the observations that you're making or be a little bit more observative, you know, and see what it is that you need to see. And I feel like I said this yesterday in, in my readings also. But this is all like, like this is the directions when it comes to you soaring, you really upholding your sacred space, knowing this abundance is coming and not giving in to the distractions, okay, of the community that's trying to come in and cause this upheaval. Like memory, okay, remember who you are. Remember you have this amazing insight. And the more you resist paying attention to the truth or whatever, when you resist this teamwork of the divine, or if you re resist the protection, that is rejection, okay? Sometimes things can turn out a little bit more hectic and you'll end up in this energy of grief and then they got to pass out this wrath to, to people. <laughs> you know what I mean? All because you refuse to change your perspective because you wanted to see the best situation. So like if there's a lot of different things and it can play out a lot of different ways for a lot of different people. So take whatever is yours and leave whatever is not yours. Like whatever sounds like you, that's yours, okay? <laughs> and just leave the rest for somebody who's actually experiencing that. But everything is actually in a very positive energy, okay? So I need you to not give up on yourself or on your journey and don't give up on your hope that you have in people outside of you too. Because I know that's a real thing. It's real easy to just be like, uh, whatever, I'm convinced there's not a decent bitch around here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it can be very upsetting and irritating. But, you know, at the bottom of this deck, when I get done shuffling, it says, I flat out dare life to pleasantly surprise me because, spoiler alert, it always will. Life will always surprise you with something better. Life will always surprise you with an improvement because you're always working on being something better and you're always working on improving yourself. 
So as long as you do that, you never got to worry about anybody trying to cause mischief or set up any illusions or anything like that. What's mischief and self-interest? Okay, it says kindness is magic. So today I'm going to make like a drunken wizard and cast friendlium to stranger as spells all over the place, you know. It's okay to be open and accepting to people who are coming in or even people that you're around, you know. <sighs> like, you know who you can trust and who you can't trust. I'm talking new people <laughs> at this point, okay. Really trust the divine and trust who they're bringing in into your life. Also, this energy of you believing that the past cycle where you always ran into the drama is closed and that you're not going to run into that. That could be the thing that you're expecting when you need to be expecting these amazing, pleasant encounters, you know, expecting to find this beautiful light that the divine offers and that the divine instilled within you in the most amazing places outside of you. And really, truly holding that belief because that those types of encounters are a big part of your great fortune that's coming in for you, but not if you are not open to it. OK, it says I'll do my best today, no matter what, even if my best is way, way, way less than perfect, it still counts. So that's what I was saying. Even if you're having a bad day or whatever and you feel like nothing's going down, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you feel like slow, everything's slow or, or sometimes things can even seem a little bit too hectic and you feel like, oh, I'm not doing my best today. I'm not acting my best today. Things aren't going in the best way they should go today. Know that that progress that you did make in that day, even acknowledging what you're going through or acknowledging your feelings is still progress in that day. It still counts toward this beautiful journey and toward this amazing work that you're doing within yourself. So please, baby, continue to go on and do what it is that you need to do. And don't give up because what you're doing is attracting so many beautiful blessings into your life. You are not going to regret it, okay? I'm getting emotional. Because, <laughs> I mean, that's the feeling, though, okay? You got this. At the bottom of the deck, it says, I face the day. Knowing nothing bad can come from telling the truth. Nothing's worse than living a lie anyway. And that's just it, you know. Make sure that you, everything that you do in your life matches this beautiful, authentic expression that you're giving out to the world. And don't expect or accept anything less than what it is that you deserve, okay? What's the final thought on this? We got three, two, one, jump, okay? So more of that <laughs> leap of faith type of energy, okay? It says your effortless effort is fully required. You might be trying to do a little bit too much, you know? Rushing the thing along. Not looking at yourself as this beautiful ancient being that lived all these lifetimes who is a professional when it comes to the energies of patience and love and grace. But looking at yourself as, as this you know, regular human <laughs> who's out here, you know, just letting life toss you around in the waves that it creates. And that's just not what it is. You have so much control over the way that things go. And sometimes it's just as simple as your reaction or what kind of energies you're willing to entertain or entertaining an energy, even though everything in you is like, uh, uh, but you know that's from a place of fear and your intuition is really saying, oh, we like that person. We want that person to be around or we like you in this energy. We want you to stay there. But sometimes we'll let our fears talk us out of certain things and certain situations. And Melchizedek just wants you to be very careful with that and not talk yourself out of making these amazing leaps of faith that you've been making because they're all just right with you, okay? unleashing your greatest work and your greatest legacy into this world, you know? So make sure that you really do listen to yourself, that you meet yourself in this stillness all the time so you don't have that that mind control, third eye type of energy going on, whether you're doing it to yourself or you're allowing another to do it to you. Listen to yourself and know, like really call out what it is that you really truly want.
No, it's the first one. So it says, how many times have you been just at the edge, but then turned around? Have you ever been in a situation similar to the one you are faced with now? Perhaps it seems scary only because you think you don't have a net. Do you believe your wings will appear when you leap? If only you knew what you know now, you have so... Wait, if only you knew then what you know now, you have so many unseen cheerleaders rooting for you. The countdown is on. Three, two, one, jump, okay? It says, the cosmic catalyst says, what am I standing on the precipice of and what will it take me, what will it take for me to finally jump, you know? It's a couple of questions for you to ask yourself, you know? It says, place at least one immovable date on the calendar that will force you to move forward, okay? So if you're having a hard time making a, deci a decision about something, that could be a good thing. Maybe it's something you have a lot of time to think about. Put a certain date or, you know, give yourself a deadline where you need to make a decision about that thing. So you, you had enough time to think about it, <laughs> but, you know, you're not going to overthink about it to where you miss that opportunity from a place of fear either. It's like. You're hesitating on certain things, and also there's a lot of energy coming at you from quite a few different places outside of you that is trying to make you hesitate, trying to make you afraid, trying to make you pull back, trying to make you quit. And it's like those two energies are kind of on the same vibration. So Melchizedek is saying, just put a lighter spin on these things. Change the way you're looking at it to change the vibration of the situation and things will clear themselves up for you and make a lot more sense, okay? So with that, I'm done. I hope you guys have a happy, fabulous, wonderful, and amazing day that you got something that you needed out of this and I will see you later, my love. Bye.